Hi guys, Sean with Alexander Tutoring, and today I'd like to talk about one of the most overlooked and simple things you can do in your physics class. It's the beginning of the school year, and I want you all to dominate your physics course. So I'm really going to quickly go over coordinate systems, which many students just leave out of their problems, and it's not okay. Here's why. What is a coordinate system? Well, it's an x-axis or an x-y-axis, if you're in one or two dimensions. But what it really is, is a way of communicating location. If I asked you where am I, you can't just say over there. You got to say like, well, you're five feet from this wall and three feet from that wall, right? You, you can never talk about a location without first defining a frame of reference. And that frame of reference will be defined by our coordinate system. So it's really important that on every physics problem you start, the first thing you do is make a big fat coordinate system. And most students skip this step because they don't see why it's important. So let me tell you why it's so, so important. Um, using a common example. So one thing that a lot of students love to do is they like to say that the acceleration due to Earth's gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And they just think that it's inherently negative. Now, here's, here, here's what's really going on. So here we have this coordinate system, and let's say that it's right on the surface of Earth, right? Always and forever, the acceleration due to the Earth's gravity will be pointing towards the center of the Earth, okay? There's your acceleration due to, a, to Earth's gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared down towards the center of the Earth. That never changes. We always fall towards the center of the Earth, but that's not what makes it negative. It's your choice of coordinate systems that makes it negative. So looking at this coordinate system that I just made uh, using the regular old y, x, y axis, x, y, Coordinate systems are what define negative and positive, okay? So in this case, we defined uh, positive y to be this direction and negative y to be this direction. We've defined positive x to be this direction and negative x to be this direction. So according to our coordinate system, what we always want to do is check the direction of this guy next to the y-axis. We, we can see that it's pointing in the negative direction so in this case, we can say that the acceleration due to Earth's gravity on this coordinate system is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That minus sign tells you direction. Now, let's do the whole thing over again with a different choice of coordinates. Coordinate choice is arbitrary, okay? You can pick whatever you want, you just have to be consistent. So let's try that all over again, except this time, I'm gonna make my coordinate system like this. Okay, so here's the Earth down here, but now I've defined this direction to be positive. So now let's go back to our acceleration vector. The acceleration due to Earth's gravity, always and forever, is straight towards the center of the Earth. But this time, let's compare our acceleration vector to our y-axis. Now it's positive. See how they're pointing in the same direction this time? and we've defined the positive y direction to be this way, which is totally fine. But now we have to write down our acceleration due to Earth's gravity as positive 9.8 meters per second squared. So gravity isn't inherently negative or positive. It's you need to first choose your coordinates and that tells you whether um, it's negative or positive. And the important thing is that once you choose your coordinate system, Everything you write down has to be relative to that same coordinate system. And that's why it's so important to that the first thing you do on every physics problem is draw that coordinate system. Students love to leave it out. That's my number one piece of uh, advice for you physics students out there. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great semester. Take care, guys.